Good morning, everybody. You'll never believe it. There we go. My camera was dirty. You'll never believe it. The destroyer got fixed. So what was broken uh, last video and why we had to quit chopping was the chopper head broke. We had to quit destroying because the starter went out. Now, uh, the problem with that was that our destroyer slash Miller sprayer has a Mercedes engine, not a Cummins. And so parts are a lot trickier to find, also a lot more expensive. So the starter, we did find one, and then it was going to be $2,700. Can you believe that? But luckily we found like an off brand, but the same one for $700. So still a lot of money, but way better deal. Anyways, so dad is starting. He's destroying these rows and I'm going to be starting this pivot so we can get it out of the way. Notoriously, this power unit is difficult to start. So I have, I don't know, the battery cables are hooked up. So hopefully the battery isn't dead. I don't know. We'll see if we can get it started. I was really hoping it was going to be easy to start and I kind of knew it would, but sometimes if I just say, man, I don't think it'll start, it starts. I don't know, reverse psychology on the motors. I think they just, they just know. Here's what the panel box looks like. So we are running at 480 volts and I push start and it's in forward and all those lights are on, which is very, very good. I've explained it a few other times, but why we're destroying is because we, oh, hold on. Air seeder on top of the sprayer 
So we're planting turnips and radishes while we're destroying the males and then when those grow we're going to turn the cows out here after harvest and they will graze down on the stalks and the turnips and the radishes. Now I am up in the cab and this is what my view looks like. It's what a pivot track looks like. We get a lot of questions about how much corn um, a pivot runs over when it is functioning. So there's the pivot. Um, and the answer to that question is not enough to tell any difference at all. So we're coming up to another pivot track here and I'll slow down a bit so I can show you better. You see that? There's your pivot track. So it runs over just a few plants, but you can hardly even tell. Um, if I wasn't filming, I'd be going faster, but I'm going a little over 10 to 11 miles an hour. And uh, I've got auto steer and it's functioning. Again, if I was filming, I'd probably turn it off and just be driving. Um, and then I've got a backup camera behind me because you can't really uh, see a lot behind you. Um, our air seeder is right there. And I can see my little indicators are turning meaning that seeds are coming out and I'm uh, going faster or slower using this hydrostat handle I believe is what it's the technical name um, it makes me feel like I'm playing a video game I like it but forwards is forwards faster and then stopped is right there and then backwards is backwards not too difficult and then this is what turns on my blades and then this and that is what turns on my air seeder. We are taking a quick break from our regularly scheduled programming because mom brought lunch. Now, could I eat and drive? Technically, yes, I have done it before, but I would prefer not to. And also messing up this job is kind of a big deal because it's not our corn, it's Pioneer's corn. Like we're growing seed for them. And I don't want to destroy on accident any of the female plants. So I think I'm just gonna call a little lunch break and sit here and enjoy this food. Thanks mom, I appreciate it. All right, lunch is done. I had orange chicken, it was delicious. Let's see what my fortune is. A stranger's kindness will surprise and delight you. Well, isn't that nice? When I was getting my lunch, I checked and made sure I had plenty of seeds left, and I do. We're going to throttle up to about 2,000 RPMs. Here we go. Start this, start this, pull up on that. Oh, take our parking brake off. Drive forward, and I started going a little bit before I realized that mom was here. So we're gonna drive forward through the stuff that I had already cut. And we are back in business. Usually when I'm in a big cab of some sort, like a tracker cab, a sprayer cab, I hook my phone up to the radio and I listen to music, like a playlist or a podcast or something like that. But my phone doesn't like the aux cord that's in here and the radio, the Bluetooth radio doesn't work. Um, and so I've just been listening to like just regular radio which I haven't done in a long time. And I just kind of have it going on quietly in the background because I'm pretty hyper concentrated on what's going on in front of me. Not a jam session, just kind of like a little something in the background, if you know what I mean. And I can't believe how many times a radio station is allowed to repeat the same song over and over. Now, I've been in the cab for several hours now, but I keep hearing the same songs over and over. Like they just have them on loop. It's ridiculous. Um, also, sometimes when I'm destroying, I wonder why my back hurts so much. It's not because I'm turning around ever. It's just because <laughs> this is the position I stay in, like hunched forward, looking, observing, making sure I don't mess anything up or break anything. Since the pivot is out of the way, I'm just going to go ahead and shut it off while I'm here. Whenever I put the parking brake on, the ladder automatically folds down and it makes me feel like I'm walking on the red carpet. It is, it's even red. I just, it's like my little red ladder. I think it's pretty cool. Look at that. Can you believe I get to drive that? I can't sometimes, it's crazy to me. 
Okay, just open this up and we're gonna do stop right there. There you go. This is what the destroyed rows look like. So here's a female row and those are two. And then this is the row that gets destroyed, chopped off. I told dad I shut the pivot off so he didn't have to come and shut it off. And he was like, well, why didn't you just start it? I don't know. So when he says start it, he means like start it running water. So I'm going to start the pivot moving the other direction, but with water this time. So we'll be irrigating. And the pivot is running. Irrigation happening right before your very eyes. It has been over five hours since the last time I stood up. Oh my goodness. My back just cracked like crazy. Fresh air. Oh. Ah. I'm gonna walk around for a little bit, my goodness. Okay, well, that was very unexpected. Um, my engine's RPMs kind of started pulling down. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I slowed down and I shut the air seeder off and the blades and I started like idling the machine down and then just died. And I had a little flashy about an engine oil pressure fault. I'm a little nervous. So I'm gonna check the oil level because I know I am burning some oil. So I hope I didn't, I don't know. We're just gonna see. But unfortunately, I am uh, in the middle of the field. So uh, I don't know, I don't know. I am currently waiting for dad to bring me out some oil. Uh, it's very hot outside, quite, quite hot. I'm, I'm not complaining because I have been sitting in an air-conditioned cab all day long. So this is not be complaining, but uh, stating the fact, it's very hot. So I have never ever claimed to be like an expert on engines or a mechanic or anything of that nature. However, I smell burning oil and um, I see that is oil. I don't think that's right or supposed to be there. And that looks very drippy, uh, is how I would describe that. Oh, that's going, I don't know. That just does not look good to me. There's definitely something wrong. Um, now, that is all the further the problem diagnosing skills I have. I guess we see what dad says. Motorcycle, call you when I'm home. Is what Jordan said? Yep. Told ya. Um, I have terrible news, terrible, like just really, really bad news. Um, added oil, oil on the dipstick and it won't start. Like the engine is turning over, but like nothing. It's like, think, mm, mm, like not good. Dad said it sounds like it doesn't have compression. And A, I feel terrible. B, I am in the worst possible spot hey, I'm sorry. because, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in a massive machine and I'm in the middle of the field in all directions and the pivot can't irrigate because I'm in the way. And so obviously if this won't start, it can't move. So we're gonna have to get it out of the field somehow to fix it. And also we're on the clock for getting things destroyed. like. We're under deadlines, and obviously if our machine is broken, we can't hit those deadlines, which is bad. And the pivot shut off. And it's 7 o'clock at night. I haven't had dinner yet. So dad is on top of the sprayer, because that's where we can get cell reception. Trying to call people and figure out what even our options are. 
but I'm pretty nervous. So there's your update. Well, so that was dad chauffeuring me out of the field. No solution is going to happen tonight. Um, we made a lot of phone calls and essentially help is on the way, but it's too late to do anything tonight. So we are going to end this video on a cliffhanger. Um, so thanks for watching and you're just gonna have to come back next time for the solution, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching and I guess we'll see where this goes. Bye.